Virginia State Bar. And in my opinion, we're currently in a great American food coma. So what is a bubble? A bubble is when too much time, too much capital is poured into one sector, the economy. So in some of my speeches, we've gone back to my childhood, and we're going to do it again. So when I was a kid, and I wanted to buy some m and I had a choice of plain or peanuts. Today you have a choice of maybe 10 or 12 M&Ms. Or frozen pizzas. I remember I used to get a tombstone pizza or there was a Walgreens pizza. Now there's 50 or 100 choices of pizzas. Grocery stores. We used to go to Dominic's or Jewel in Chicago. What do we have today? Maggiano. We have uh, Mariano's, Trader Joe's, the Whole Foods, Jewel, Dominic's one of these things, Walmart, Target, the list is endless. So much capital poured into food. So as some of you know, I work in the banquet department at the Palmer House, so I've actually seen the changes in people's taste in food and stuff like this. And I have, can give you some great examples. We all know gluten-free and sustainable, organic, all these things have become more popular. And I remember, and also allergies, everyone has allergies nowadays. So I remember it was about a year ago, we had a banquet for, say, 400 people. It was a breakfast buffet for a pharmaceutical group. And we had eggs, pancakes. It was a nice $40 breakfast at the hotel. Made good money. And I remember uh, we couldn't have orange juice in the room because there was one lady in the group, she was allergic to orange juice, and she couldn't have it in the room. Imagine <laughs> someone is so allergic, so hypersensitive, that they can't have orange juice in the whole room. And I just thought about it like, this is ridiculous. The fact that people have gone to such extremes now that they can't even be in the same room. I mean, to me, that's, it doesn't make sense. And if we look at uh, culture today, you see how people are so over who does all they think about? What's some of the most popular shows now is the celebrity chefs. It's not just one or two. There's probably hundreds of celebrity chefs now. So what do you see now? You see a lot of young kids, maybe tens of thousands of kids going to a chef school, and I know some in the hotel. And they all have their full sleeve tattoos, and they're gonna be a celebrity chef, go to chef school, but probably most of them end up getting a cook's job for 10 or 12 dollars an hour and this is after they paid tens of thousands of dollars so at the same time that everyone is so interested in what they eat from the 1970s or 80s until now the percentage of the population that's overweight is probably 40 percent so people that are overweight naturally their health care costs are Studies have shown uh, American healthcare costs probably just the fact that people are overweight or maybe one or two hundred billion dollars a year. So if we look at all these things, what are we really getting out of all these great, wonderful foods? Sure, they taste good, and in some cases they're healthier, but the overall fact is we're probably less healthier because we're overweight and we put too much time and energy into food when you could be doing something else. How long does it take you to, Simon, how long does it take you to pick out a pizza when you have 50 or 100 choices? I don't really eat pizza. I know you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> With my daughter. Well, for me, it could take five or 10 minutes just to decide what kind of pizza I want. This is a waste of time. Now, I'm not saying we go back to the uh, communist days where you have one or two choices. But the fact is, in my case, is the food bubble has reached extreme levels. Just like I said, the time, energy, capital, going into one sector is what we do. So just imagine, what if all this time and energy was directed towards somewhere else? What, about, what if we had a bubble for people reading books? A book bubble. People are reading too many books. They're going to too many Toastmasters. Everyone's always complaining about their politicians and no one knows what they're doing and no one knows the issues. Well, the fact is it's our fault because we don't read and we don't know what's going on. 
So these are the things I'm bringing up today just in the food bubble. Some of them are serious, some are not serious, but it is some food for thought. So the next time you're going to your local jewel looking for a frozen pizza or perhaps a ice cream you can't decide between a haagen or Ben and Jerry's a Chunky Monkey with marshmallows or something like this, so many choices, why don't you just perhaps get a pint of vanilla ice cream, go home, pick up a good book to read, and call it a day.